welcome to this episode of Jing TV. We're going to talk about one of our most favorite topics, our favorite trigger point books. Yeah, we love trigger points. Janet. Janet. We love, love Janet. Janet Chevelle. I'm sure David Simon was probably also a good guy too. A really too. <laughs> nice person. Um, but we do love Janet. Um, the, this is the source. The source. The Bible. The Bible of trigger points. Uh, it is in two volumes. Uh, Meg actually brought these for me from New York. I did. And, and from the Swedish Institute. From did after. You? Is that where you bought them? Yeah, I did. Yeah. About 15 years into you being a massage therapist. Yeah. And I want to say about that, those two that I remember when I first went to massage school and my massage teachers had them and I wanted yeah. them but they felt a bit heavy and weighty and I also waited 15 to 16 years so they are incredible but they're incredibly expensive resources um, and we always joke that the the chapter on the quadratus lumborum is 65 mm, pages fantastic. long. It's um, fantastic. Um, but it's got everything in here. It's like, you know, you've got these really cool pictures of the muscles that in fact is the quadratus lumborum, um, where the trigger points are, where the referral pain patterns are, all this very exciting text about everything and anything you could possibly imagine would be useful. Um, and all well, she does a great job of sort of the postural assessment. She brings yeah. in all the medical information around the muscles, the trigger point, how posturally somebody might hold themselves to create trigger points. Um, oh, and more pictures, lots of pictures. It's not enough pictures. It's not enough pictures. <laughs> um, and what else? Because there, there is something in here that. Um, tickles me around the uh, spray and stretch techniques so janet never did um manual work right she so she treated trigger points with an injection of saline solution um, i also think she did a freeze and, and spray, spray. And stretch. Yeah. yeah that's right because those are the things that tickle me you get these sort of pictures of so what janet did to um release trigger points was to spray a coolant spray uh, and then stretch the muscles so you get these kind of practitioners with these kind of graffiti looking hands <laughs> um, and it's quite interesting because this was the tech you know Janet Chevelle and David Simons are you know the grand grand mummies the and grand masters of, of trigger point therapy but actually hardly anybody seems to use spray and stretch anymore like I don't know anybody who uses it or you know trains in it um, but that was definitely their preferred method of releasing well, trigger points also it's a little bit counterintuitive to us so it'd be interesting to kind of for somebody out there to research a bit more about the idea of cold spray and then stretching um a trigger point anyway I mean, we'll leave that at, to look you at, the look viewers. At that one. i mean that looks wrong doesn't it <laughs> okay anyway but we still love janet all right second we do favorite love book That's okay <laughs> second favorite book is um What's now known is the trigger point therapy for myofascial pain, the informed touch by Fernando and Fernando. Um, I think they went to my school, my massage school. Do they went to it or they taught at it? Mm, I think there's something to do with it. <laughs> Maybe they went to it and they taught it. I, think I should probably did. find out. I it probably says New York College, New York College of Holistic Health Education on Research. Long Island. Great school, Long where Island. I'm from. Anyway, yeah. so the thing about this book is. And there are quite a few trigger point manual books out there now, but this one's particularly good because of the pictures. So we have nice, clean pictures of the referred pain patterns. So we have a nice, uh, clear diagram of the muscle itself with the red point saying where the trigger points are most likely found. We have a description of the attachment points, the referred pain pattern, so explaining what happens. Also, what's great about this, which is why we think connected up to New York yeah. College, is there is a, um, he, Donna um, and Stephen Fernando are both acupuncturists. Um, so Stephen Fernando is a PhD and Donna Fernando is a massage therapist. Are they married? Are they brother and sister? I assumed that they were married, yeah. but we could we look at that. We don't about know. Donna and Stephen. So you've if got you're like, out there, you know Donna and Stephen. Go to get or you are Donna and Stephen. Or Steven. you are Donna and Stephen. So you've got a massage therapist perspective, a PhD and 
a PhD perspective, so an academic perspective, um, and both of them being acupuncturist so you've got an eastern perspective and you're working with a very western concept yeah. that um Travell and simons put out in the 1950s so you've got a really interesting element there and they talk a lot about how acu i'm sorry trigger points correspond with acupressure points in the meridians they also do a good job of doing very simple il illustrations of simple stretches that different therapists can do and use um, and perhaps even our favorite bit, which I use all the time in class, oh, yeah, that's good. is what we call the classic cheat sheet. And what's great about this book is if you're new to trigger point therapy, you can put this out to your patient and say, what pain pattern really represents what you're experiencing? And it's such a difference, isn't it, for somebody to see it on paper than you just verbalizing yeah, yeah. it? Because trigger point pain patterns feel quite ethereal so somebody will come in so for instance if I show you the pain pattern of oh perfect so there's your erector spine eye right with um, the red points being where the trigger points are often found Rachel yes very good um, and then the pain pattern so what you can often get is a client who'll come in and say I have pain between the shoulder blades sort of rhomboid area and I also have pain in the hip, but they have nothing to do with each other. And you know, you probably can't deal with the hip thing or something. You know, they kind of make decisions. But if you show them the yeah, pain yeah. pattern of a muscle, like the erectors, and say, well, actually, this can be coming from the same source, just trigger points in the erector spinae, you get a very different reaction to your yeah, treatment. Yeah, they just get it. Yeah. So yeah. Th this this is probably by far the book I use the most in treatment. Okay. Um, our other, we tend to find our students, you know, be, don't buy as much the Travel volumes because they're, they're big and lots of words and expensive. Um, but both <laughs> of these actually are sort of like on their shelves. Um, the Claire Davis book, uh, we love Claire Davis. Um, sadly, he's not with us anymore. He died a few years ago, but his daughter um, Amber, I believe, has carried on his work. And Claire, he is a man, not a girl, uh, called Claire. And um, he used to be a piano tuner and he actually found that um, he received trigger point therapy and that really helped him with some of the pain that he had um, from years and years of piano tuning and crawling around under pianos and on pianos and you I don't know, know whatever he, you do as a no piano tuner if that he crawls causes around. you to be in pain. <laughs> um, and then he and then he went to massage school quite late in life and got really into trigger point in therapy. In his 60s, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Um, and this book was actually not written for massage therapists. It was written for clients. So yeah. it was written for you know lay people, as they're called. To people treat know. themselves, because he was such a convert to, um, to massage therapy. He just felt like everybody should learn it and everybody should learn to treat themselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, so actually what's great about this book is that like you don't need to know your anatomy in massive depth although obviously we would recommend that you do because <laughs> everything is explained really simply um, and he shows um, all the different muscles um, and areas of the body so it's divided into different chapters head and neck pain uh, upper arm pain low back pain um, and you can find the chapter that corresponds to the pain that your client has um, and it will give you an idea of what oh, muscles might be yeah, involved. Yeah, that's great. So quite, that's a different cool. kind of, that's like a, a listed kind of cheat sheet. The other part that we really love about this is the illustration. Yeah, it's clearly him. It's him. It's I mean, with his sweet. like partial hair. Yeah. You know, it's very personal. Is this it? Where's the picture of him? The guy with the book. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want the book. There was a picture of him somewhere and he really looks like this. But I know, because I, I feel like I can see it. him. In my face. I know. Um, and then Amber. <laughs> His daughter. I do, I know a little bit about okay, Amber. Okay, tell me about Amber. So Amber kind of, I think, caught on to actually this book wasn't being picked up in your general bookstore by people who wanted to treat themselves with trigger points because nobody knew what it was. So she included in later publications um, a chapter that's for the massage therapist on how to use yeah. the book. So if you're a nerdy massage therapist like we are, what you end up is with, with the first versions of these books yeah, yeah. and then they gradually get improved. So actually this book, we've got the old hardback copy of it. Oh, I love it. that. And it, it didn't even say anything to do with trigger points on the no, cover. No, it was it 
it's called, called informed, informed touch. touch yeah um, and then some marketing guru obviously realized it might be quite a good idea to put trigger, trigger point there, I think I it think. was the sub I think it needs to be the sub title of it sub, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna kind of not contradict Rachel I'm just gonna say I think it was informed touch blah 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 the trigger point yeah. you know I think it was the other direction mm. Mm. Um, mm. so anyway so later versions of this book um, you know, me and Meg have the original battered copy, but um, the ones that our students end up with are these. So this has got, you know, a nice chapter at the end that's actually for a um, massage therapist. So that shows you how to find the trigger points in other people. So those are all, there are other trigger point books There's out there. There's a load out. You know, Asher's done a bunch of, well, um, we love these Asher ones. done a, quite a few good ones. The other thing I just want to point out about Janet's book, and that we really talk a lot, you know, and this is about trigger points. Back is, to Janet. Back to Janet. Um, <laughs> is that she did call it the trigger point manual, and that is really what's become legendary. But of course, if we look at the appropriate title, it's myofascial pain and dysfunction. And you know, we teach a lot of myofascial work. And that actually was very secondary when she first published it, and it's not why. This book's become yeah, so and she famous. She doesn't talk about anything to do with my fashion. She doesn't really. really talk about it. The but new editions, they talk about um, these newer copies. Um, they talk about different ways to treat trigger point, and there's a little bit around my yeah. fashion work. Yeah, but, but what she obviously was saying was the trigger points were involved with the my obviously, obviously, obviously as it's her knew. title. She did. Yeah. So I think that's also something to look at historically. Yeah. So those three in your bookshelf, or four, with the other volume. Yeah. Then. You got a complete trigger point Bible, I would say. Bibliography. I think library. Library, there library. you go. <laughs>